you are looking to learn more about IT or study for one of the many certifications, sign up for a free trial of Pluralsight. Their vast library offers many courses ranging from software development, IT operations, and cybersecurity. Please check the link in the description for more information. If you are Yo, what's going on YouTube? This is Zach with IT Career Questions. Welcome to tonight's stream. We have a special guest with us tonight, uh, Mr. Chris Collins. He's a senior security um, um, IT analyst or senior IT analyst. What? Same thing, right? Uh, he's also a sysp holder, but uh, he's going to come on and um, you know share his his story, share how he got in IT, what got him interested in IT, and then eventually what got him, got him involved in security. So, um, welcome, Mr. Chris Collins, to the show, and uh, please, if you will, you know, give us a give us an introduction. Yeah, how's everyone doing tonight? My name is Christopher Collins. Um, been doing IT for a long time. Uh, basically started when I was a lot younger, probably around the age of 10, thanks to my father, who tinkered with computers at home, uh, started going through all that stuff. I can actually say that I am an original DOS user. I remember using Windows 3.1, um, some other operating systems out there, uh, OS2, OS2 Warp, if anyone can remember those back from the IBM operating system days. Um, just one of those things to where I was always interested in it. My first job, instead of flipping burgers, is I did work at a corporate law firm in Las Vegas. Uh, there I spent time learning Novell 3.1, uh, Windows NT4, uh, starting your networking when everything was still static IPs. DHCP wasn't really a big thing back then. From that point, just did numerous different jobs that always had kind of an IT aspect to them, but never really in the IT field. Uh, it got to the point to where it no longer was viable to get a job by stating that I know how to work computers when I first started, because that's really all you needed back in that time, back in the 90s. If you could walk into somewhere and say, I can turn on a computer and I know how to plug one in, they'd be like, great, you're hired. Uh, so went to college, got my degree, ended up going into the IT field, working for a couple different MSPs and MSSPs, and that's where I landed now. Awesome. It's quite the journey for you. Um, one of the, the first jobs in the school district, uh, one of the school districts I worked in, uh, we were using Novell and GroupWise and all that, and uh, that was, I mean, gosh, that wasn't even 10 years ago, I feel like. Was... I think the uh, the funniest thing is is that if you look at the old wind if you look at the old Novell 3.1 and how it's organized and look at Active Directory today, it's basically Novell. Oh yeah, for sure, definitely. There's definitely a, a lot of tie-ins between the two of those. But uh, you know, I couldn't stand Novell back then. <laughs> it was terrible. It's terrible for any to any environment that we had, um, because at that at the time when they, we, they were utilizing it, I mean, Active Directory was just you know that was the go to you know, so uh, it yeah, is what it absolutely, is. it is what it is. So, what uh, what what got you interested the most in security specifically? So, I mean, the biggest thing with security, um, probably when I was around fourteen. Uh, that's when you could go on the internet via dial-up. And I used to dial up through a multi-com BBS system, which ran on top of SunOS. And you drop to your Unix prompt, and then you can either use your WinSocket if you wanted to use a GUI interface, or you could do everything via command line. And tinkering around in the Unix system, I stumbled across their password file. And in that password file, I used uh, Cracker Jack, which is the predecessor to John the Ripper, and was able to decode almost the entire password file. <laughs> uh, I let my father know because I was like, hey, look what I found. And we let the BBS know. They went and they did some security tweaks, and they actually came back to me a few days later. And they're like, hey, do you think you could try to do that again? I was like, sure, why not? And basically ended up as like a mini pen tester to get free internet access to constantly break into their system. Um, 
after that, I had a high school teacher with Novell who was very big of himself and always said that he was smarter than all of us. None of us could be as smart as he is and no one could break into his network. I took that as a challenge accepted <laughs> and was through the network in about 15 minutes. Awesome. That's so cool. I I love hearing about people like that. And then I love hearing the stories when they get, you know, put flat on their face. So that's that's great. I'm glad you were able to do that. Oh, yeah. He single-handedly blamed me for his divorce because uh, I had him for computer science in high school for two years straight and just constantly ran amok on him. And it was never anything malicious. Everything I did, I always showed him. Uh, the big thing was is using Novell was logging in through a DOS system, and it would use a batch file to log in. And what happened there is that, you know, he modified to where you couldn't do a control C, you couldn't do a control break to break out of the batch file. But if you held down the alt key and went into ASCII mode and did a zero zero three, that does a control break. <laughs> yeah. So that, that just stopped things right there then, huh? Absolutely. And, you know, really ever since then is always what's tweaked my mind about security. And it's not even really about doing anything malicious. It's about, you know, how can you get in there? Okay, now that you've done it, how can you fix it? What do you have to do? All right. I, I think there's a lot of different mindsets when it comes to, you know, cybersecurity and, and where you're going to end up as far as, you know, what part of the field or even if you you know, maybe you end up on the, the wrong side of the field, you know, that, that happens as well. But, Absolutely. you know, what do you think some of the the most, you know, needed traits are in somebody who is looking to jump into a cybersecurity role? Some of the biggest traits you have to have is you need to be a big time outside of the box thinker. You need to be able to look at the situation and you can approach it, you know, head on, but then you need to think about what can you do to do the side steps? What is it that somebody else hasn't thought of? Stepping back and taking a look at the big picture. Uh, another thing, another mindset that you really have to have in cybersecurity is you have to be prepared to fail. And the reason why you have to be prepared to fail is you're just going to be going at things all from a different route. And technically, failure is not a bad thing. Failure shows that anything that's been put in place or any countermeasures that are put in place are actually being effective. So technically, just like with anything else, you're failing your way to success. And you just have to have the attitude of, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep pushing forward no matter what it is. Awesome. I couldn't agree with what you're saying there more. I mean, that's, that's absolutely... True. I, I think a lot of what you said could be applied to to many areas um, when it comes to getting into IT in general also. But, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, ov overall, I mean, the, the overall IT mindset from the cybersecurity mindset really isn't too far different. You know, I... I work with network engineers, I work with cybersecurity professionals on a day in, day out basis, and our roles will intertwine so much that the lines will get blurred. Yeah. Well, what kind of, uh, you know, tasks are you doing on a day to day basis that you can share in your, you know, analyst role? Um, what we're doing on a day to day basis is we'll do threat analysis we'll do manual packet reviews see what's going on uh with the packet we use different types of tools to go through and help us analyze those uh we do a lot of whitelist blacklist working with a lot of clients in an msp environment so that way you have to be that professional you have to be the go-to person uh, for them to be able to reach out to you and be able to deal with or to know how to find the answer to whatever they may, may be reaching out to you for. Uh, one of the good things about where I work is that we have different tasks that we do every day so that way it doesn't become monotonous and you don't get that lag to where when you're doing the same thing day in, day out, day in, day out to where you'll end up missing something just because you get in that mindset. Awesome. 
awesome. Sorry, I'm just, uh, I'm listening to you, I'm following along with you, and I'm trying to, like, pay attention to the chat, too, so. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. So, I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, I know people are, like, asking a bunch of questions, so it's hard to keep up with all of it. Yep. Um, you know, I, this is a question that I want to ask for, basically, I'm interested in this question, is, you know, what do you enjoy about being in, in security and in, in your role specifically? What I enjoy the most is I enjoy digging. That's about the easiest way to explain it. I like to go in there. I like to see the problem. I want to go into those rabbit holes. I want to see what caused it. What's the fix? How can we make sure it doesn't happen to someone else? How can we make sure it doesn't happen again? You know, what is it that we can do that will mitigate this to make it harder for the next go around? Because as we know, in the world of cybersecurity, you can't say my system is unhackable. It's what can I do to make it not worth the uh, perpetrator's time? Right. Yeah. I, I can I can definitely appreciate that. You know, I, I, I kind of, you know, feel that way about it as well although like you know i I love helping people like that's my big thing obviously that's like what i'm doing here you know so uh, i'm not sure if you're aware but like i'm going through a process right now where i'm going to get my security plus i'm going to get my ccna um, but i'm making different efforts because i would like to work in the cybersecurity field um but you know i think one of the areas again that I, i i just find the most enjoyable for me is like the anywhere where i could where I can teach. Right. So like awareness is like a big thing for me. So like social engineering and things like that are, are, are stuff that like interest me like very, very much, uh, when it comes to, I, I guess the security field. Um, yeah, that's so completely this- understandable. I mean, one of the things I do, uh, even when I'm not at work is I mentor cyber Patriot teams. Uh, that's the air force association, uh, cybersecurity skill set for middle schoolers and high schoolers. It kind of puts them in a blue team environment. Awesome. And the, the fun thing about doing that is you don't get to use any tools. So you got to go in there. You have to find, you know, the persistent threat that's already in the system. You got to remove it by hand. You need to do all your analysis by hand. You have to harden the system by hand. And that's, one of the things I enjoy doing most is always getting kids involved in that. Definitely. That, that's what, you know, I'm trying to do here too, is it get as many people involved, kids to adults, you know, and, and interested in this field, you know, from IT, cybersecurity, coding, whatever the case may be. Yep. Yeah. Um, here's a question I think for you that will answer, I think a lot of people's questions um, you know, what, what are some of like the skills or, or technologies that, you know, people should be learning as they're looking at security as a, you know, as a whole, I guess, you know, cause there's obviously many different areas within cybersecurity, but what do you think are some of the, the basic technologies and, and not, I'm not saying basic at a basic level, but just, you know, some of the fundamentals of security, you know, what technologies do you think are, should be known. Uh, First and foremost is Linux, 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 Linux. The fact that I am booted in my laptop right now in the windows for this kind of makes me feel a little (laughs) icky. (laughs) Sorry, man. I apologize. (laughs) Um, I have a story about the, about that too, but go, keep going. Uh, Linux first and foremost, and then really for cybersecurity, um, there's so many different avenues of it. Um, you know, you can go at it from the risk perspective to where, you know, you're someone who's working with clients, you have the understanding of it, you know how to translate it from basically IT speak to human speak, so that way anyone can do it. Um, lots of roles like that. And then you have a role like what I'm in, which is extremely technical. Um, networking, you, you got to really have your networking down. Uh, I know that for my role, when you go to actually go into a position at my company, you go through a tech screening and you'll get packets put in front of you and they'll be like, what is this packet doing? Um, so that's a number one thing, uh, besides Linux is you got to have the networking on there as well. And then 
just an understanding because the biggest thing is is that if you can understand the networking part of it and if you know how to navigate linux and work with linux there's a lot of stuff that can just be taught to you as long as you show that aptitude and that's one of the biggest things as well is being able to show that you have the aptitude for it yeah oh i agree 100 percent there and again i want people to know that that could be applied to everywhere in it if you show that like many organizations are looking for people like that um people are asking like you know is, is coding required for cybersecurity? um you can you know there's many roles i feel like that definitely coding can be uh used but i, I would say more so scripting is something that should should be looked into scripting for sure um I don't do a lot of coding in my position. It's actually one of the things that I put down for my 2019 goals is that to become extremely proficient in Python. Oh, awesome. Uh, that's, that's a big thing out there, especially for a couple of the certifications I'm looking at. Python helps a lot in that aspect. Um, really, it it comes down on what you want to do, you know, coding is going to be, do you want to be a reverse engineer for malware? Do you want to see how the malware works? What makes it tick? Why does it do that? That's definitely somewhere where you need coding. Um, if you're doing any type of security with APIs or anything along those lines, that's definitely where you need coding. It's really going to be what type of role it falls into, because one of the biggest things is that you can look online and you can look up security analysts, and you're never going to find two jobs with the title of security analyst that are looking for the same type of qualifications and experience. It's really right. going to be where are you applying at and what do you feel comfortable with? Yep. Couldn't, couldn't agree with that more. There's so many jobs out there like that. Yep. I, I feel like the, the, the titles and it are so skewed. Um, and it's the the organizations and the businesses that are screwing it up for everybody. Yeah, I think some of, some of my favorite ones is where I look through and I'll see a job title for a security position. And I read through it and they're like, we want five years of Java experience. You need three years of C Sharp. And I'm like, that's not a cybersecurity role. <laughs> that's a developer role. You know, that's DevSecOps. That's not cybersecurity. Right. Yeah, you see that. But you see that kind of thing all the time. It drives me nuts. But whatever. <laughs> what are you going to do about it, you know? It's it, I I don't know who leaves like these these titles up to the like the companies that, you know, are throwing them out there in their th this application process, but it's just ridiculous. I think a lot of the times now it's it's really the recruiters. Something that I've noticed recently on my LinkedIn was almost like an all out war against recruiters recently and it's rather hilarious. Really? I haven't seen that. I guess I, um, I'm kinda of, I'm not really haven't like haven't been in the market, so I kinda of don't pay attention to that. It was it was about it was about a month ago. Uh, one of my one of my connections on LinkedIn actually replied to a post that a recruiter made, and it was basically a post about a recruiter who found the unicorn job applicant, and the job applicant ghosted them, <laughs> and the recruiter went completely off the chain about it, and at the same time, everyone was like, wait, 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 you're complaining because you're a recruiter and someone ghosted you. How many times have people been ghosted by recruiters? Right. So it just turned into like this whole thing that's still going on. I'll, I'll, have, to... To find, I'll have to find the chain and I'll send it to you on LinkedIn. Yeah, I definitely want to check that out. It'd be, be worth a good laugh, I'm sure. <laughs> um, are you down for uh, for answering a few questions from people? Yeah, absolutely. Fire away. Cool. I know. There, man, I just see like a ton coming through, so I feel bad. Like we're just like yapping away here. But I, I'm, all the information that you know you shared has has been awesome. So thank you for that. Um, I guess we'll start it off now. Like, so if if anybody has any questions, and if you've an, if you asked a question already and we didn't answer it, please ask it again because it's hard to keep up with the chat. Um. See, somebody asked if they're getting back in the IT field and they want to get into cloud security, can you just jump right into it? Uh, how do you feel about that? So 
cloud security is one of those funny things. It's for me as a cybersecurity professional, cloud security almost feels like an oxymoron. Um, one of the greatest things ever is when you explain to someone that the cloud is just someone else's computer. Yep. Um, with that, there's actually a cert that I have on my 2019 list. It is the cloud certified security professional. It is basically the cloud version of the CISP. It's not really an entry level. Um, some things you may want to look at is I know CompTIA has the cloud plus. So that way you get, you know, your knowledge into it. And then there's also AWS certs and AWS has certs all the way from architecture to specializing in security. So if your heart is really set on cloud, I would definitely start with the cloud plus to get your fundamentals and then start looking at the AWS certs. And then from there, you could look at something like the uh, cloud security Alliance uh, certification or the CCSP. Awesome. Great advice. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, here's a good one for someone just starting off. What are the steps required to get into security with security plus be good or CCNA cybersecurity? Um, here's one that, yeah, I definitely want to hear from you and I have my, my thoughts on this too. So go ahead. So the CCNA cyber ops is brandy new. Um, that is kind of Cisco's take on, we need a cybersecurity, uh, certification because a lot of people will mix up. They'll say, they'll see CCNA and they'll say CCNA security. And they're like, I have a cybersecurity cert with a CCNA security. That is not the correct assumption. CCNA security is actually just routing and switching plus firewall is what that is. Um, SEC plus is always a good way to start. Um, the 501 is no joke. That is the new version of the SEC plus. Uh, I know people who have a decent amount of certs, um, people who have degrees in cybersecurity. I have a friend who has a degree in cybersecurity. He just passed the SEC plus, but by the skin of his teeth. Uh, CompTIA has really stepped up their game. So if you're looking for that entry level, I think SEC plus is where to go. Plus also with that, um, if you're ever looking for government work or anything like that, government's always looking for people, especially entry level. SEC plus is DOD recognized. So that's a shoe in right there. Yeah. I guess I don't have to say anything because you kind of said it I, like what I was thinking essentially. Yeah, you know, uh, the CCNA, you know, that's all Cisco. So for me, that just that's really heavily focused on, you know, networking, um, where the Security Plus is very well rounded. So if, when you're looking at that entry level starting point, I think that Security Plus is is definitely kind of that go to, you know. Yeah. Um, once once you start specializing or getting more involved, you know, you might find where uh, getting a CCNA can be beneficial for you. But you know, that's obviously. Uh, you know, down the road as you're figuring out where it is that you, you, you think you'll lie within the field, you know, if somebody just starting out, you're not going to know exactly what you're going to want to do. You know, that, that's how I feel. You know, you could definitely have a, have a thought that yes, security is where I want to be, but where at in security do you want to be? You know? Absolutely. I mean, even where I'm at in security right now, isn't even the end goal for me. Um, my end goal is to get more onto the digital forensic side. Oh, awesome. So what kind of things are you looking to do? Because I know a lot of people ask about uh, forensics. So can you actually go into a little bit more detail on that, if you don't mind? Yep. So digital forensics is basically what you're doing with the aftermath of the situation. You're going through the kill chain on what exactly happened. What are the steps that happened? How did it happen? Um, the biggest thing there is that everything that you do with digital forensics is something that can appear in a court of law. So there's a lot of rules that you have to follow. Uh, there's a lot of steps and documentation, paperwork. Digital forensics is a lot of paperwork. And just think about it as any other type of law enforcement investigation. Everything that you do has to be documented. How did you find it? Where did you find it? 
how did you happen to come across this? Uh, when I took digital forensics classes in school, it was almost half of a law class, half of a forensic class. Wow. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, thank you for that. Because, I, I, again, I know I've, I've had people ask me that, and that's not something that I've been 100% clear on. So appreciate that. Yeah, it, it's one of those things that, you know, digital forensics is that if you're a digger and if you're willing to put yourself out there, it's a great thing to be in. Yeah, I, I could definitely imagine <laughs> for sure. I'm I imagine it's very lucrative, too. <laughs> not as much as you would think because a lot of a lot of companies and uh, areas out there don't recognize it yet. Uh, your digital forensics people are usually going to fall into your area of incident response. Okay. That makes sense then. That, that helps put it all more into perspective then. So yeah, that makes sense. Um, getting an entry-level cybersecurity job with no certs, is it possible? Uh, absolutely. I mean, so I, I get it. I, you know, uh, the recruiters right now, companies right now are definitely all over the certs. It seems to go in spurts, so to speak. A certification is great and things like that, but it really rolls down to experience and what you know, because a lot of cybersecurity roles, when you go in for those interviews, it's not your typical interview. It's going to be in an interview to where you just have people firing off questions. For a perfect example, where I work now, when I walked into my day one interview, I had five people sitting in front of me plus two people on conference call. And when we went through our normal, hey, how's it going? You know, this is who I am. This is who you are. All that fun stuff. I then started getting questions rocketed at me from about every angle. Awesome. So they just they just go right in. They go they, they go deep right away. They go deep right away. And usually for cybersecurity positions, they don't hide the fact that, you know, it, it's a major thing. You've got to have that experience. You've got to have the know-how. They're not going to bring, you know, someone in who doesn't, you know, who isn't getting it. So for an opening IT role, it's going to be relatively hard to just walk into a cybersecurity role because you have to build some sort of platform. Where do you build your platform at? You get yourself a nice help desk job, desk side support type job. you got to, you, first of all, you got to learn to have that thick skin in IT because. <laughs> Uh-oh. I think we uh, cut out. Maybe drop the call. I'm not sure. We'll see if Chris comes back because he's frozen right now. Um, however, thank you very much, James. And uh, thank you, Bacon Barrel Roll. And thank you, IT Career Skills. Uh, thank you, Hairstyles on the Go. Thank you, Dakota. I very much appreciate all the super chats. You guys are great. You guys are very, very awesome. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully Chris comes back here soon. We'll see what happens. Um, anyway, um, so I kind of, oh yeah, let me just drop the drop the call. We'll see what happens. He'll be able to join. Uh, let's do the. Sh no, nope, we don't want that one. Live chat. Awesome. So I actually have kind of a story that I could tell you guys. Because uh, last night, I um, I was going through a course on uh, Project Ares, which platform I've talked about before. If you guys are unfamiliar with what Project Ares is, it's a gamified um, cybersecurity training platform. Uh, if you guys just head over to circadence.com. I'll put a link in the chat right now. Circadence.com. I was doing this course on Linux basics and I went through the LPI Linux essentials course like six, seven months ago. And I, I got through it just fine. Got all the basics down pretty well. I thought, but last night I'm um, going through this mission on Circadence and, um, and project Aries. Um, 
I, I could not remember the basics. And I was getting so frustrated. I was like, actually like very, very mad. And I said, you know what? I'm like, I'm over this. Like I'm completely done and over this. And, uh, I decided I was going to put Linux on my MacBook because like my MacBook has been my daily driver for like the last two years. Um, outside of this window, mach windows machine that I'm on right now, because I do all my video editing on this and all my live streams on it, but the MacBook, everything else I do on that thing. So now I'm put Linux on this MacBook. I'm only going to use Linux. That's it. Well, uh, did some research, tried to put Linux on there. Well, I tried to put Linux on there like three different times and like the mouse didn't work. The keyboard didn't work. The wireless didn't work. And then I did more research and it turns out that like the 2017 version of the MacBook Pro has issues with, um, with all the, with all the stuff, with, with the, the touchpad and all that fun stuff. So forget it, whatever. I, uh, and during this process, keep in mind, the, like the last time that I tried to install Linux on it, I accidentally noobed it up completely, like 100%. And I deleted the partition for Mac OS. And that was the point, or I just like said, F it. I was like, just screw it. I'm not touching this thing ever again. And then I went out and I bought uh, a different laptop at Walmart for like, I don't know, 300 bucks or something. And I put uh, and I put Linux on that, made sure it works. It's all working now. But like the MacBook is just sitting there and doesn't have an OS on it or anything. And I'm not going to put an OS on there. Uh, so I'm doing a 30 day Linux challenge to myself. And I'm, I'm going to actually put out a video on that. Um, probably within the next couple days or, 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 uh, or a few weeks or next few days. And there you guys like, go. uh, hang on, uh, Chris, I'll be right with you. I'll, I'll put you on here. I was, I was actually telling a story about how I, uh, I, um, was going through a Linux course last night and I couldn't remember the basics and I was getting so frustrated. So I, I said I was going to install Linux on my MacBook, and I couldn't get it to work right. And then it turns out, like, the last time I tried to install Linux on there, I deleted the uh, the partition for, for Mac OS. And, uh, yeah, I totally noobed that up. Uh, <laughs> so I just said, screw it. And I, I went out and bought a, uh, a different laptop today and threw Linux on there. <laughs> and that's going to be my daily driver for the next 30 days. I'm doing, like, a 30-day Linux challenge. Um, so, like, my MacBook still does not have an operating system on it. It's just sitting there. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Like, I'm, I'm dedicating, like, the, literally the next 30 days to uh, to using this Linux laptop as my daily driver. So, nice. yeah, that's what I was talking about since you got disconnected. Since, uh, I don't know, Windows 95 crapped out on you or whatever. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, we'll catch up here because uh, there's some more questions if you're good. Is that cool? Yeah, ab absolutely. Keep them coming. Cool. Uh, so James uh, Shackleford, thank you very much for the the, uh, the super chat. He wants to know your thoughts on the Pentest Plus. Uh, on Pentest Plus, I haven't uh, really looked into that one. Uh, I know that it's going to run along the lines, most likely, of the CEH question only. Uh, it's going to be along the lines of a lot of multiple choice. Do you understand the tools? Do you understand the flags that you need to do? Uh, can you do the packet analysis? Are you able to identify threats from the high level? Yeah. Have you seen many jobs that are, uh, that are looking for it? I really haven't seen a lot of jobs with, with the pen test plus um, really if if you're looking to go the pen test route, uh, the one thing that's sticking out in my mind right now is the OSCP. Okay. Why is that? Uh, OSCP is, it's a practical, it's a 24 hour exam. Uh, you got to go at it. You got to figure out the system. You got to break your way through it. You got to do most of it by hand. And while it sounds like fun, you have to document everything. I know people who have gone for that exam, who've sat for the exam, who've broken through the entire thing, but because they had poor documentation, they failed. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, a lot, a lot of cybersecurity, 
a lot of a lot of stuff out there you have to be able to document it like for instance like when i'm going when i when i'm looking at a threat that comes in from a client and i'm trying to determine if it's a false positive or a true negative or a true positive excuse me however i mark that down i need to be able to document that to back that up on how i came to that conclusion that makes sense i mean the, the last role that i had in um working in a hospital um all we I, I think i felt like all i ever did was documentation but it's so crucial to i, I think many roles in it of course but i, I could definitely see where uh, we're definitely much more so in, in security it, it it becomes beneficial um and one thing that i always recommend for people who aren't documenting things that they're doing now is to start learning how to go through that process and, and just document some of maybe your day-to-day -day tasks or maybe some things that you may have had trouble with, you know, um, and then you can refer back to them, you know, maybe you did like a step-by-step -step, uh, on troubleshooting an application or something like that, you know, and here's, you know, here's the steps that you took. Document that, you know, you might have to refer back to that someday, but maybe going through that repetitive process, process of just documenting some of the things that you're doing and putting more detail into them. I think that's a uh, one skill that can, can definitely help. Um, it, just even going further within your career. Absolutely. I mean, documentation, anytime you come across something is a huge thing. Uh, especially when you make your quote unquote go bag to where, when everything goes down, you don't have access to resources, you've come under attack and you need to start figuring things out. You have documentation, you have everything that's out there. Um, it's one of those things that I would recommend anyone who's looking into IT security, like start making a little go bag. So that way you have that type of documentation on a fly. You have those types of books. Some of the greatest materials you can get is the red team field manual, the blue team field manual right off Amazon. I think they're like 15 bucks each at this point in time. And it's literally a book of just tons of different commands you can use different paths and you know if you need to find the command real quick a certain type of end map command and you can't remember the exact one you can flip to that page and find it i mean google is also a great toy and a great tool to use but sometimes it's not always available All right agreed um man there's so much going on here uh thank you bacon barrel roll for the super chat and he's got a question or she i'm not sure uh, thoughts on cybersecurity being obsolete due to AI? No, will never happen. Um, cybersecurity is still a brand new aspect for a lot of people. A lot of companies are just now playing catch up. I mean, if you look in uh, our, basically look at the country's infrastructure and look at what's going on there, the SCADA systems at power plants, they're so far behind, they're just now starting to catch up to IT security. Uh, I used to work at a financial institution that had a massive crash and openly admitted that they didn't build the IT infrastructures they should have because they didn't see it as something relative. So cybersecurity is just now like in its big time fundamentals to where it's human interaction. Um, you can barely get people to uh, go along with biometrics right now, nonetheless, to go around and turn your cybersecurity, your breach protocol over to AI. Yeah. And you know, another area where I see that cybersecurity has just not been adapted yet also is, is uh, healthcare. Absolutely. Which is uh, uh, very sad <laughs> and very, very scary. <laughs> It's definitely something to where, you know, they're they're starting to catch up uh, or they're playing catch up more or less. Uh, a lot of the cybersecurity jobs I see out there are always some kind of health care. Uh, thank you again, James. Man, uh, will learning a programming language be beneficial? Absolutely. Uh, the one thing you have to remember is in the field of IT or cybersecurity, anything you can do to add to that skill set to be like, hey, I know how to do this and I know how to do it proficiently will go a long way no matter what type of position you're in. It's always good to have something down. For instance, I don't use a lot of programming in my day to day, but 
I want to lock down Python. I'm also proficient in C++, but it's something I don't do on a day-to-day basis. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I think, um, you know, even with like, you know, learning, you know, Python, PowerShell, um, th- those are things that can help, you know, automate parts of your job, you know, and somebody asked, you know, automation going to take your jobs? Well, not exactly, but you can definitely help make your job a lot easier. <laughs> Just remember when you're writing that automation script that to keep a little bit of human interaction in there that you know how to take care of. There you go. That's good advice. <laughs> job security right there. Exactly. Uh, Zazen69. Um, uh, Chris already answered uh, what his day-to-day is kind of like. Um, but it was, is there anything else that you could share about your day-to-day maybe that you didn't cover earlier? Um, it can be stressful. <laughs> it can be very stressful. Uh, like I said, uh, whenever I make a decision on something, I can ask other people. I can ask my colleagues. I can ask managers about you know the decision I want to make. But at the end of the day, uh, whatever decision I make, I have to stand by. So if I make a wrong decision, I got to be pretty prepared to explain myself quick, fast, and in a hurry. And on the flip side, I have to be prepared to learn extensively to hopefully make sure that that type of error doesn't happen again. Because unfortunately, we're human. Errors happen. Mistakes do happen. Yeah. A hundred percent, man. Can't agree with you more on that. Um, do you telecommute or do you work in an office? I work in an office. Uh, I'm able to telecommute and it really depends on the situation and the mood. Gotcha. Do you prefer going in or do you? I prefer going in because I have a much nicer setup at my desk (laughs) at work than I do at home. Yeah, I can respect that. The The thing that I miss about, like, you know, because, like, I work at home now, so, the, like, the thing that I miss is actually interacting with people, <laughs> you know. And it, it's funny, like, hearing, like, an IT person say that because, you know, most IT people, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't say not even anymore, uh, but, you know, a lot, of, a lot of IT people are introverts, you know. They don't like being around people. So, yeah. you know, you get a lot of, I get a lot of questions from people, like, how do I get a job at home working in IT? Because a lot of people just don't want to deal with people, but. Um, yeah. I'm on the other side where I like, I love being with people. I love talking and interacting and you know, the, that's my thing. But now I'm just kind of like, all right, what am I going to do? I'm by myself. <laughs> you know, I got no yeah. one to talk to. The telecommute is nice. Uh, but depending on the company, it, you know, it, it's allowed and limitation, you know, limitation to it. Like for instance, I get one day a week to where I telecommute and it's usually, uh, a weekend day uh the way that my office works is everybody has to work at least one weekend day so that way it's fair so you either work or a saturday or sunday so everybody gets at least that one day off and then usually on that weekend day i'm working that's when i choose to telecommute and then the other thing that you brought up and what i should have added to a skill set earlier is in the world of it everybody years ago thought that going into the world of it that if i know how to do it they're going to put me in a data closet somewhere and i'm never going to have to interact with another human being for the rest of my life and this is going to be everything i've ever wanted in all its glory (laughs) that is so far from the truth it's not even funny if you're going to be in it cybersecurity, no matter what the technology field is you have to have soft skills and you need to have them down pretty pat 100 percent on that soft skills are so important soft skills can get you a job <laughs> like just plain and simple soft skills can get Absolutely. you a job you don't have to have anything else just soft skills and you, you're hired <laughs> and a lot of people don't understand that and they don't see that you know one of the one of the biggest things is that something that they preach at work is like our culture if you have a basic understanding and you show you have an aptitude, we can teach you. We can teach you your skill sets. We can build you up. If you sit there like a bump on the log and we can't get you to communicate and you're not going to communicate, open your mouth, and you're just going to sit there and stare blankly off at the screen, we don't have a use for that. Right. 
Yeah. I, and I've dealt with so many people like that too. It's so frustrating. I hate that. And, but you know, and I've been in so many environments where they've been so welcoming to, um, if you don't know something and they're right there, ready to teach you, ready to get hands on with you and just dive right into it. And that, those are the environments that, you know, that people thrive in who want to be in this field, who want to succeed. You know, if, if you can get yourself into an environment like that, you will succeed. If that's what you want to do, you will succeed. Absolutely. And, you know, like I was stating before, I got cut off starting at that help desk. Um, I know you've talked about this before. I mean, when, when you start that help desk role, just remember there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Yep. Yeah, definitely. I, you know, uh, I think people sometimes get worried that they're going to get stuck in the help desk. And, um, I, I think there, that's the case sometimes because, um, people don't put that effort forward. You know, they're, they're not putting their best effort into it, uh, which is really unfortunate. But if you, if you are, you know, putting the work in and you're trying to get to that next step, the help desk is just, that, that's a, that's a stepping stone to, you know, greater things. Absolutely. And I mean, another piece of advice that I can offer, um, in an IT role, it's almost expected that if you're in a position for about a year to two years, it's time to start looking for something else. That's just the way it is. Um, in the IT field, like if I was to show you my resume, you would see that I've switched companies or I've switched positions usually about every year and a half to two years. And it's just the way that it has to be in our field. Um, complacency, not a good thing for us. Yeah, I think the average turnaround time is like two to four years in, in IT roles. It might even be less than that nowadays, but two to four years is typically like how long somebody will be in a in one company before they're looking to advance or, you know, just move on, period. Yep. Yeah, I, I've The longest I think I ever, was ever in a role was three, three, oh, three and a half years. It's the longest I've ever stayed in, in one job. And then yep. on to bigger and better things. Absolutely. Always, always on to bigger and better things, you know, especially if they're not going to help you internally, that can always be frustrating. And that often happens a lot, but sometimes it's even good just to get into a different environment and get introduced to different technologies and, you know, new people and things like that and help expand your, your network and skills and move forward with your career. Absolutely. And one of the things you mentioned there was, you know, not moving internally. I can say that the only time I've had to look outside of the company is when I got to points to where either I wasn't going to be moved internal or it wasn't allowed to happen. Uh, one of the biggest things people do have to remember, there are places out there that, you know, once you get into a role, uh, one of the biggest things you see is that if someone really excels at a role, you'll see some companies there that try to hold them there. And that's one of the worst pitfalls for anyone. Um, and it's sad to see, and it's really hard when people don't recognize that. Yeah. Yeah. I need to do a video on that. Now, now that you kind of bring how bring that up, the way that you brought that up was just like the way that that struck in my head. I was like, I have to do a video on that specifically for sure. Absolutely. I'll come back and do it with you. Let's do it. All right. I'll be hitting you up. For sure. Um, how would a data center technician go about getting into the field of cybersecurity? They do mainly break, fix, and project work. Um, I feel like that kind of that question there could be like worded where you know how can somebody in X position get into security? Yeah. You know, I mean the the biggest thing um, you you said it earlier um, network. Network with people in your company. Um, don't be afraid to, you know, reach out, go outside of your comfort zone. Uh, one of the biggest things I ever did is um, when I first started at my company is 
a vice president, our vice president came into one of our team meetings and, you know, said basically what you always hear someone at a higher level say, my door is always open. Don't be afraid to come and talk to me. You know, most people just let that go in one ear and out the other because they figure that's what it's meant to say. Uh, I actually went and did that. I took him up on it and I went down and I sat with him and it was one of those networking experiences where when it did come up that I was moving for another position and I let him know, he was like, well, I think you're a good fit for the role. If you run into any snags, let me know. So, I mean, it's really, you know, reach out to who you know, you know, reach out to your manager, let your managers know. One of the biggest things that we do at my current company is we do uh, ride-alongs to where if at any time you have interest in any other department, you let your manager know, your manager reaches out to a manager of that department, gets you, you know, an hour, a couple hours set aside every month to go and sit down with this other team, see what they do, see if it's something that you want to expand into. And even just offering to do that, you'd be surprised that the second that you show initiative, that the management team will be all over that. You just have to take it upon yourself to do so. Yep. I, uh, this kind of reminds me of a time, uh, one of the school districts I worked for, their networking uh, network administrator, I would beg him like almost all the time. I begged him for like months, like, "Hey, can you sit down with me? Like, show me some of the stuff that you do. You know, show me how to configure like like uh, VLAN. Show me how to configure a port. Just show me show me some of the stuff that you do." And he would not do it. But a- absolutely would not do it. He's like, "No, no, you know, you're on help desk. I'm not going to show you how to do that. You don't need to know how to do that." Blah blah blah. Got the run around, but the moment we got new equipment in, I was the first person that he came to and said, Hey, do you want to help? I said, well, yeah, I'll come help you. You know, so I, you know, help put the stuff in the racks, you know, help plug in ports again. And then he's like, all right, do you want to sit down and, you know, I'll show you how to copy, you know, the config files and all that. And I was like, yeah, but you got to show me how to configure ports. <laughs> so, you know, we worked that out, but just being persistent sometimes, you know, maybe if, you, if it doesn't happen right away. You know, if you show persistence with somebody in, in your environment, maybe down the road they come back and, you know, they'll be like, well, they really wanted that. They really wanted to do that. They were really interested. So we're going to go back to that person and now, we'll, you know, we'll get them going. Yeah. So if you're already in an IT role, if you're already in that data center position, the hardest part is already done. The hardest part is getting your foot in the door. Yeah. So definitely network, network out. And that will, you know, that's going to be your big jump. Also take the time to look at some entry level certifications. And, you know, if you can get your SEC plus, get the SSCP, uh, any of those entry level certifications, network plus, just something that shows um, that you have the initiative. Because a lot of times that's what a certification shows is not only do you have the skill set, but you have the initiative to actually go out there and do it. Absolutely. Um, so how, how do you, you mentioned certifications quite often so far, but what do you feel, how, how do you feel about um, formalized like education degrees? Formalized education degrees, um, I think a lot of it is going to be on the school that you go to and the type of education that they offer. Um, I do have a bachelor's in cybersecurity. My associates was in network engineering. Uh, I went to a technical school to where everything was hands-on, to where it wasn't just all lecture. It was hands-on. You got to do the stuff, um, messing with Cisco equipment, doing pen testing, things like that. And then I have friends who went to the state university who has a degree in computer science. And he's like, I basically got a math degree with a little bit of programming. So, I mean, you really, with your formal education, um, formal education is huge. Formal education goes a long way. That bachelor's degree, that master's degree goes a long way. Uh, But you, you need to research the program, find a program that fits your needs. Look at, you know, reviews, ask around. Yeah. 
No, I agree. Sorry. I was reading this question because it's it, it's actually a pretty good question, and it's like a variant that I always often kind of get. Um, they ask, will the degree in a uh, again, will degree get in uh, above entry level position in cybersecurity? Uh, they're currently in implementation analyst role and going back to school. Um, but yeah, have you seen where you know, say, it's somebody with a degree would get past an entry level job or anything like that? All right. So let me let me speak from personal experience. When when I interviewed for my company, I interviewed for just a normal analyst role. I was going to come in. You know, that's that's what they had open. That's what I interviewed for. When I went and I interviewed with them, and when I got done, the next day, uh, HR got back to me, and they're like, we're not going to give you the analyst role. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, thanks for calling and letting me know. They're like, no, instead we're going to give you the senior role because of how you interviewed. Um, I can't. I can't say what the winning combination is. Uh, I work I work with a lot of people who have degrees. I work with a lot of people who went to different universities. I work with people who only have associates that went to community college. I work with people who just have certifications. I mean, it's really... It's so diverse. It's such a diverse it, field. It, it's so diverse, and there's, there's no one secret unlock code. Right is really what it comes down to um i mean the hardest part is getting the interview yeah uh, that's the hardest part and then really once you're in the interview um you got to do that interview right and one of the suggestions i give is when you're sitting down in an interview if you really want to get their attention you need to interview them as well just did a and video on that <laughs> And when I sat down for, when I sat down for mine, I remember I asked a question and everybody looked to the senior most person in the room because the question I asked, he was really the only person who was qualified for it because the biggest, the question I asked is the company went through an IPO a year ago. And I said, since the company went through the IPO, what has the culture change been from a private company now to a public company to where you now have to appease stakeholders along with everything else? And it, the room just went dead quiet. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. That, I mean, that totally puts them off guard, too. Like, that's awesome. I love and that. it also it also shows you've done your homework right. when you can ask Absolutely. a question like that. Absolutely, and that's a big thing too that not a lot of people do is you know research the company that they're going to you know uh, to interview for. It, you, you know, I think a lot of people would be surprised how often that does not happen. That will put a nail in your coffin faster than any. You can have the most pristine interview, and then when they get to the end of it and they're like, "So, do you know what we do?" And you just stare at them during the headlights. They'll can, they'll quietly talk to you, but if you watch their hand motion as they close that folder that has your resume and everything on it, that's the door being closed. Right, right. Uh, there is actually one time I was working with a recruiter, and they, I, I don't, it would hap everything happened so fast, and they got me like an interview like the same day um, that they called me about it and everything, and you know got it set up and it was literally like two hours later i went and interviewed at this place and uh they asked me that question like you know what we do here i'm like oh no i didn't <laughs> like, i have time <laughs> like I, I had to drive an hour to get there like i had like no time like oh, i really I, I don't know i'm sorry like i don't know and i actually still ended up getting that job <laughs> which i was like shocked by but i couldn't believe it and not i'm not saying that you know that's a good thing or anything but i'm just saying like yeah. i just could not believe it i was like holy crap <laughs> pulled that one away <laughs> yeah um thank you sid 17 for the super chat then and, and they ask what's your take on field technician jobs like, uh field technician's a great role i mean some people don't want to be bound in an office i used to have a job where i was in the field um at one point in my life i used to work on atm machines and work on the hardware and software in there and that was a great job. You know, that was one of those things. See my manager maybe once a month, no one bugged me, kind of, you know, went and did my own thing. Uh, 
field position is a great role. I mean, especially, you know, if you got, if you have travel time in between sites or in between calls, I think that's the perfect decompression time. Uh, I mean, I work in a sock and the only decompression time I get is literally when you're walking out of the building yeah. because it's, it's a constant go, 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 go. So in a field technician, fantastic work. Yeah. I remember when I did consulting um, in Chicago and and well in the suburbs then too, but you know, I'd spend maybe four or six hours at a location and then I'd have to go to the next location, which could be like an hour away. But that, that hour was like the greatest hour of my life. Like that's what you like, you look forward to, (laughs) you know? Um, So cool. I I think we, we nailed a ton of questions. Is there any other advice that you want to give to people who are looking to get into, uh, you know, it or getting into cybersecurity that, you know, do you think would be helpful? I mean, we covered the networking, um, network out, uh, make friends in the community. Um, especially in the cybersecurity community, because the one thing I found is that in the cybersecurity community, everyone's going for the same goal. And for, for the most part, everyone is always willing to help, to give a hand, to give some sort of advice. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure you can attest to this back, back when I started in the IT field, trying to get someone to show you something I mean, because they thought because they knew that no one else didn't, that, you know, that was their golden ticket. They're yep. indispensable at that point. So you could never, ever get anyone to teach you. Uh, then the other thing goes likewise. If you have something to teach people, you know, see if people want to be mentored, you know, do things like Cyber Patriot, go to local meets and things like that. I mean, anytime. Anytime when I approach a situation, even if it's something I know, especially in the IT field, even if it's something I know, I still walk into the situation with an open mind being like, you know what, maybe I'll learn to do the same thing, but I'll learn how to do it faster or a more efficient way. Uh, So have an open mind towards it uh, when it comes to helping people, asking for help. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Yeah. I agree, man. Definitely. Cool. I, I really appreciate you coming on and, uh, and answering all these questions and, and sharing your story, your advice. I think everything that you have shared with us has been like extremely valuable. So, uh, I hope many people, you know, got a lot of value from this cause there was, there's just tons of value here. So thank you very much again. And, uh, I'll definitely be hitting you up about coming back on again because i think it'd be awesome to have you back on and do this yeah absolutely i mean at any time it was a great thing and like i said you know i'm always up for helping people so if people want to scout me out on linkedin send me a message you know if you got a couple more questions we weren't able to touch on here uh message me on linkedin let me know and i'll answer them to the best of my ability and if i don't know the answer to them i'll find someone who does and i'll get you pointed in the right direction cool Awesome, man. I appreciate that. That's awesome. All right. Well, I think that's all we got for you guys tonight. So thank you for watching and uh, you all have a great and fantastic night and uh, always be learning. Great thing to do. Take it easy.